But for all our employees do for you, we embrace our responsibility to take care of our employees very seriously, to take the very best care of them. And in 2018, Delta announced a partnership with Sarcos to advance groundbreaking exoskeleton technology. It's going to make our employees safer and better able to do their jobs. Let's take a look. Sarcos Robotics makes advanced wearable robotic systems that augment human performance to make employees safer. Look, Ma, no hands. Uh, the benefit of exploring a partnership like this with Sarcos is this kind of technology can potentially shape the way we work in the future in the airline industry. It is just another example of how we use technology to further empower our people. Robotics is a growing industry. We're an innovative company. We want to stand on innovation. Well, imagine if we could turn our team members into superhumans, giving them superhuman strength, superhuman endurance, the ability to safely lift a lot of weight. Delta is about safety. So to be able to be hands-on with this, it tells you how much they care about the employee. But to actually be able to see it and feel it and have hands-on, you really get a big picture of what the company is trying to offer. We looked for companies that were the clear leaders in technology adoption, in innovation. Delta was the natural fit. We've been providing them our thoughts and ideas about how their technology can benefit us as an airline. We'll be working very closely together to harden the technology and get it ready for commercial deployment. We're amplifying any force that you put in there by four times. In the full robot, when it comes to production, we're going to aim for 20 times. We were lifting 30 pounds. It's really simple when the robot's doing all the work. It's lessening the load on your arm. So a lot of the stuff that you think you can't do, the robot's doing for you. It's exciting to see how we'll be able to use it in the workforce, hopefully with this new Mexico suit, it will help prevent a lot of injuries that may happen. More people have opportunities to stay in their current roles longer because they can do the job longer. You know, we have employers who love what they do and would love to do it forever. This technology can actually help that. Now, yeah. now I've always, I've always thought of our people as superheroes, but now they can be superhuman as well, right? You guys want to see the exoskeleton? Let's bring the exo on stage. Fletcher, come on out here. Here comes the world's first and only full body battery powered exoskeleton. And his name is Fletcher. Hey, hey Ed. Hey, CES. How are we doing today? Fletcher, I, uh, I've got to say that looks pretty cool. That looks pretty cool. But you know, we've got we've got something out here. What, we uh, do. What are we, we doing? We do. We we have a, a special delivery for you. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and let's let's uncrate it for you. How about that? I think you're uh, I think you're really going to like this gift, Ed. Well, you've got me really curious. It looks heavy. I wonder what's inside there. Uh oh. <laughs> that doesn't look too much like a nice present. It's. Who gave you, told you to get me one of these? <laughs> this is a 150 pound barbell. Well, I know from my New Year's resolution that I promised to get back into the gym. I think that might be a little too heavy to start with. But well, what do you think? Well, with the Guardian Exo, anyone can lift this much weight. So even though it is 150 pounds, it, it's really easy. Um, because strength isn't a factor since the suit's doing all the work for you. So what does it feel like to wear? What's it, what's, is, it, is it comfortable? Can you move around? Yeah, the suit's super comfortable. Um, it carries its own weight as well as the weight that I'm carrying, uh, just like this. And honestly, it, it feels like a small backpack, if anything at all. Yeah. yeah. And, and how about moving? Is it, does it restrict your, your range of motion a lot? Or? Um, no, I mean, you guys saw me in the video. That was me with the you know, helmet moving the exoskeleton around. And you saw me you know, changing tires. You saw me lifting boxes and suitcases. And uh, I, I can even dance in the exoskeleton. Do you want to see that? You can dance you inside that? that? I can dance inside this thing. What do you think? Let's see him. Show us our moves. <laughs> That's pretty good. We're going to see you in the disco later tonight, I think. Well, Fletcher, thanks so much for my delivery. I've got one last question for you. What is it? Well, I'm going to have to use that. You're going to need to be my workout partner. Oh, of course, Ed. Anytime. Okay. Let's do it. 
Give me a fist bump, and I'll see you in the gym. Okay, sounds great. Though, <laughs> you to put it back up there. Yeah. Though I will have to say, we should probably start with something a little bit lighter, honestly. <laughs> Unless we're using the exoskeletons, then we could do this all day. Absolutely. Sounds good. Thanks, Fletcher. Take yeah. care. See you at CES. If you would like to learn more about the Guardian exosuits and even try out the technology for yourself, as I did last night, and put the suit on, come visit, visit us at the uh, Delta CES experience. It's very, very cool technology. Now, let's get Sloan safely back and on our way to her destination. Even after you've arrived, our work continues. Because at Delta, we know getting you here is only half the journey. We'll be there every step of the way to make sure traveling isn't something that stresses you, but something that delights you, empowers you, and lets you connect with the people and places that matter most. I hope we've made it abundantly clear today that Delta's responsibilities and vision extends far beyond the flight to the entire journey. And by creating a seamless experience, we can help travelers look up and connect with the world around them while they travel. There is no substitute for the power that travel has to change lives and make our world a better place. Unlike a cell phone, a video chat, or a text message, it's real life connections that build understanding, empathy, and the desire to act. And we all know the most vital responsibility that we share is to build a better world. We're also well aware that our future and the futures of generations to come require us to be accountable for the damage that human progress has made to our environment. And at Delta, we take that responsibility very seriously. We've been committed to sustainability for years, and we're making our efforts even more meaningful as time goes on. Like so much we talked about today, there is no single solution, but projects, large and small, are bringing progress and hope. Back in 1990, Delta became the first US airline to recycle cans and other onboard waste. We've recycled enough aluminum to equal the weight of seven Airbus 350s. We're recycling oil and scrap metal at all of our maintenance spaces, and we've recycled uniforms and life vests. Delta is leading our industry in eliminating single-use plastics on board our planes and at our airports. And some of those plastics are being recycled into the products you're sitting on today with your blankets. But our chief focus is jet fuel. It's the number one contributor to our carbon footprint. Air travel on the whole contributes about 2.5% of the world's carbon emissions. And Delta has been working for years to reduce our emissions and the impact on the environment. Today, our total emissions are down 11% from where they were in 2005. And in 2012, Delta voluntarily capped our emission levels, which means that all growth beyond 2012, and we've grown 25% since then, has been carbon neutral. But these steps are good, but they're not nearly enough. Our goal is to cut total emissions in half by 2050. And to get there, yes, you can give us some we need, we need your help. To get there, we're deploying the tools available today and investing in the technologies of tomorrow. The new planes I mentioned that we're bringing into our fleet are 25% more efficient, which translates to lower carbon emissions. We've invested in a study to produce biofuels made from forest debris in the Pacific Northwest. And we recently entered a different contract to bring us 10 million gallons of renewable biofuels a year, as soon as that production facility is completed shortly. We were the first airline to offer customers the opportunity to join us and contribute to making their travel carbon neutral and using those contributions to invest in renewable and natural climate solutions. And this week, we are doing it for you. 
If you flew Delta to Las Vegas, we're offsetting your flights to and from CES, so your journey did not leave a footprint. Now, let me be clear. Let me be clear. Offsets aren't the whole answer to sustainable travel, but they are one tool. And the investments that we're making with them are creating extraordinary opportunities, and their impact is big. Through offsets, we're putting investment behind initiatives that have lasting positive impact, not just on the environment, but also towards eradicating poverty. We're fortunate to have a tremendous partner who's here with us today to help talk about how sustainability and poverty are linked and what together we're doing about it. I want to welcome Hugh Evans, who's the co-founder and CEO of Global Citizen, to join me on stage. Hugh, please come out. Thank you for uh, joining us, Hugh, and it's great to have you here. Tell us a little bit about Global Citizen. Where did the idea come from, and how did you get started on this journey? Well, thank you so much, Ed. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. All my life, I've been passionate about sustainable development. My journey started when I was 14 years old. In my first year of high school, I started raising money for communities in the developing world. We were an enthusiastic group of kids. We raised more money than any other school in Australia, and I was awarded the chance to go to the Philippines to learn more. It was 1998, and there was one night that changed my life forever. We were taken onto a slum in the center of Manila called Smoky Mountain. It's an entire community built on top of a rubbish dump where the very infrastructure of this whole community revolves around scavenging. And so the kids literally run after